Welcome back to the lecture series on module 3 of the text English for Career. Today we will be looking at another passage. This is passage 7 from your text. Before we move on to the passage, let me remind you all once more to read carefully. Once you read the passage carefully, it will be easier for you to answer the questions. So let's move on to passage 7. Passage 7 is something that will interest you quite a bit because it is uh, concerned with exams and whether exams are really important in a student's life. Okay, so let's move on to the passage. For many students, exams seem a necessary evil, time consuming yet inevitable. But are exams really necessary? Are they evil? Rather than abolishing exams, we should instead be asking what mix of assessment tasks is most appropriate for each subject? Where might exams fit and what are their benefits? In most disciplines, there are specific bodies of knowledge that students are expected to learn. Exams enable us to accurately test students' breadth of understanding of these topics. Exams are also useful for a very different reason. They are harder than essays to cheat on. Drawing on our characteristics of good assessment, it is impossible to provide a balanced, fair evaluation of a student's performance if the student has paid someone else to complete their work for them. Finally, and on a more positive note, there is evidence that both studying for and sitting exams deepens learning. Studying is like exercising. When one exercises, the muscles in use grow stronger. Likewise, the process of searching through one's memory and retrieving the relevant information strengthens that memory pathway for future uses. This means that when newly qualified teachers, doctors, lawyers or accountants come to retrieve information they need, it is as a consequence of having been practiced previously, now easier to access. So, how can we best make use of this practice effect for memory? Research tells us that learning is particularly strong when students self-test. Rather than passively reading and remembering by rote, we want our students to study by forming appropriate questions searching memory for relevant responses and knitting this information together into an appropriate answer. We think this third benefit of exams is the most exciting. Exams don't just provide a targeted, fit-for-purpose opportunity for students to demonstrate what they know, they also have the power to enhance what students know. So this is your text. I hope all of you read it very carefully. I hope all of you remember what I said in the last class. First, read carefully, then note down the important points, try to make connections, try to visualize if you can, and think before you answer. Now, let's take a look at the important points in this passage. So, the passage addresses the question of as to whether exams are really necessary. Are they relevant? Are they important? Are they something evil that you should do away with? And the authors suggest that rather than abolishing exams, what you can do is that you can use a specific set of assessment tools or assessment tasks to judge or gauge a student's knowledge in a specific subject. So you should not use a generalized set of assessment tools or assessment tasks to check a student's knowledge in all subjects. Rather, depending on the subject, the assessment task should also differ. And exams are important because they provide valuable information about the student's knowledge of a subject. And exams also prevent cheating uh, as opposed to something like essays. Children can cheat during uh, essays because they can ask somebody else to write the essays for them. But as far as exams are concerned, students cannot cheat and therefore it will give a more fair assessment of the student's skills. And exams also improve learning skills because studying is like exercising. The more you exercise, the more developed your muscles will be. 
so it improves your memory and consequently your knowledge and they stress the importance of the practice effect and the authors conclude the passage by saying that the most important benefit that you can get from examination is the importance of self testing students should constantly test themselves so that they can improve their uh, memory and enhance their knowledge enhance their learning so these are the important points in the passage now let's try to look at the questions and uh, answer the questions based on the passage now let's take a look at the questions the first five questions are multiple choice questions the first question is which word in the passage means that which cannot be avoided so you given four options option a is targeted option b is appropriate option c is relevant and option d is inevitable here the correct answer is inevitable option d so inevitable means something that cannot be avoided and this word appears right in the beginning of the passage for many students exams seem a necessary evil time consuming yet inevitable so uh, the authors seem to suggest that though examinations or the process of conducting an examination is a very difficult one it is something that takes a lot of time but it is something that cannot be avoided now the second question the word which is closest in meaning to result is consequence benefit opportunity and evidence these are the four options and the correct answer is option a consequence the word consequence uh, appears uh, in the paragraph that begins with the sentence finally and on a more positive note towards the end of that paragraph you will see this word consequence as a consequence of uh, having been practiced previously so consequence uh, has the meaning result question number 3 the phrase to cheat on in the passage means to commit adultery to break the rules of something both a and b or to steal let's take a look at where this phrase appears please look at the sentence that begins like this exams are also useful for a very different reason they are harder than is easy to cheat on so from this context it is evident that the phrase to cheat on means to break the rules of something so the correct answer is option b to break the rules of something now we come to question number 4 identify the statement which is not true the four options are option a exams help in testing the subject knowledge of students option b exams should be modified according to the subject option c exams enhance memory and retrieval of information option d none of the above so if you look at option a exams help in testing the subject knowledge of students that is true the authors have made it clear that exams are a sure way of Uh, testing whether the student has requisite amount of knowledge in that particular subject option b exam should be modified according to the subject that is again an idea that has been made clear in the passage the authors believe that you should not use a generalized set of assessment tools to check the knowledge of a student in all the subjects instead you should use particular assessment tools for a particular subject option c is exams enhance memory and retrieval of information uh, the authors have said that you know studying is like exercising so the more you study and the more you prepare for exams the more sharp your memory will be so that statement is also true so the correct answer here will be option d none of the above because all the other statements are true now question number 5 the phrase by road means option a by hook or by crook option b by mechanical repetition option c by reading and writing and option d through analysis so let's just take a look at where this phrase appears this phrase appears in the second last paragraph the paragraph that begins with the sentence so how can we best make use of this practice effect for memory so look at the third sentence rather than passively reading and remembering by rote 
We want our students to study by forming appropriate questions, searching memory for relevant responses, and knitting this information together. So uh, from the context, it is evident that by rote here means by mechanical repetition. So the correct answer is option B, by mechanical repetition. Now you have a few questions where you are supposed to answer in a sentence or two. So question number six, what questions does the author try to answer in the passage? So right in the beginning of the passage, you have a number of questions raised by the authors, whether exams are really relevant or whether exams are evil and what benefits can be gotten from exams. And so you can write it as the author tries to analyze whether exams are really relevant or whether they are evil. The author also tries to identify the various benefits uh, that you can reap from exams. See uh, here the passage is written by two people. So technically it is authors and not author. But since the word author is given in the question, you can use the word author in your answer as well. So question number seven. How can you improve assessment systems? Look at uh, the paragraph beginning with the sentence rather than abolishing exams. That's the second paragraph. So here uh, the authors make it very clear that we should not have a generalized uh, set of assessment tasks for all subjects. Instead, depending on the subject, you should modify these assessment tasks. So the answer can be assessment systems can be improved by using a mix of assessment tasks that will be suitable for specific subjects. Now let's move on to question number eight. Why does the author prefer exams to essays for student evaluation? The answer to this uh, question can be found in the paragraph that begins with the sentence. Exams are also useful for a very different reason. So exams are preferred in place of essays because the students will find it difficult to cheat during an examination. And consequently, you will be able to get a more fair or just assessment of the student's knowledge or the student's skills. So the author prefers exams to essay as it prevents cheating and provides a fair assessment of the student's knowledge. Now question number nine. What is the best study technique according to the author? The answer to this question can be found towards the end of the passage. Look at the second last paragraph. Um, the paragraph that begins with the sentence. So how can we best make use of this practice effect? There, uh, research tells us that learning is particularly strong when students self-test. So when students start testing themselves, they'll be able to improve their memory and subsequently their knowledge as well. So the answer can be the best study technique is that of self-testing. When the students test themselves, they will improve their knowledge and memory. And now the last question, question number 10. What is the most exciting benefit of an exam? The answer to this question can be found in the last paragraph of the passage. Exams don't just provide a targeted fit for purpose opportunity for students to demonstrate what they know. They also have the power to enhance what students know. So the most exciting benefit of an exam is that it helps the students to improve, to enhance what they have already learned or acquired through their studies. I hope all of you understood the passage. And more importantly, I hope all of you are practicing reading comprehension passages. Uh, we will look at more passages in the coming classes. So that's all for now. Thank you.